Crime, Wine, and Chaos contains adult language and graphic content. Listener discretion is advised. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, four let's go, Chaos Kids. This is Allison. (laughs) And I'm Amber, and this is Crime, Wine, and Chaos. Hi. How Thank are you? you? I'm living the dream. Thank you for co-hosting. Hey, honey, anytime. Mm-hmm. I am here for you. Thank you. And, Thank you. And the show. Yes. Um, Can you see my hair very well right now? It looks a little dark maroonish. Oh, well, that's just the glow of my microphone. I did this thing that Marissa, <laughs> my younger sister, told me about. Have you seen the curly girl method? You know where my mind goes with this. <laughs> what? Is this your, your mermaid hair? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Well, I did the curly girl method. It was a little bit labor intensive, but I think it turned out. I used a no curling iron. I do see the curls. Well, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. I did the curly That's girl up. method. Mm-hmm. So this works for mermaid hair. Apparently. I'll send you a link. You should try it and see what happens. Is it the little foam rolly thing? Like the big no. old... Mm-mm. I used no devices. Oh. It's all about how you wash what? and condition and gel <gasps> and dry. Wait. Okay. I've seen the commercials for those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And I I've know. been thinking about getting it. So it yeah. works. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's exciting. How labor intensive it is it though? Well, it was labor intensive because part of the process is you kind of leave your hair like sopping wet and a little bit like on the slimy side with conditioner and then gel and you let it air dry. And when you have 20 pounds of hair, like mm-hmm. my hair was air drying yeah. for like four hours. So, um, <laughs> so I don't know, but for other people with, you know, maybe less hair, maybe that's. Do though yeah. this one though I've also seen where people put it up in that like I mean it looks like a bag over your head. Yeah. This method says that you can towel dry it a little bit but they'd say use a t-shirt or a terry cloth like not a proper towel. Mhm. So I did that. Found mm-hmm. a big old t-shirt uh but it's still like my hair is so heavy that towel drying Mm. doesn't really do much so but it worked i am so happy for you yes definitely send me the deets on that i will i'll send you the link my my hair might take a whole i don't know 10 minutes (laughs) well i mean you've got your hair's long it's just not super thick exactly well it's you know it's thick but it's fine yes that's yeah there there you go that's what that's what she said but (laughs) she she thick but she fine (laughs) god that's amazing thank you for that um do you have anything before i tell you a very sad tale what are you drinking oh thank you for asking um i don't have i don't have wine i'm drinking an ice iced coffee because I think I concluded concluded yesterday. I had a splitting headache, and I think it's because I didn't have enough caffeine. Oh, that'll do it so, every time. Ugh. I was at a conference yesterday and today, and so I wasn't, you know, working from home having cup after cup after cup like I normally would. Uh, yeah, that definitely would. I remember those caffeine withdrawal headaches. You want to see what I'm drinking? Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Zero. Yeah. Zero. Mm-hmm. Of course, I, with after all that sugar from the crush, I can't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I gotta get some zero sugars in me. <laughs> oh my god, I made cookies oh. yesterday too. What kind of cookies did you listen? Get? I still had we still had one and a, one and a half solid chocolate Easter bunnies from my parents, so I took the kitchen <laughs> mallet to those fuckers, <laughs> and then I made chocolate chunk cookies. <laughs> chocolate I, Easter bunny chunk cookies. I bludgeoned the Easter bunnies <laughs> and then I made cookies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I bought some of those orange uh icing cinnamon 
roll bun things. I've got those waiting to be made. So Ooh, mm. okay, well, we'll get on with it so that you can make those. Um, oh, I know. Yes. Go ahead. I've, I've got a missing <laughs> person's case for you that is devastating. Are you <sighs> ready? Probably not, but go for it. All right. I'm going to tell you about Danielle Bell. Okay. Okay. All right. So we are going to Friday, September 28th, 2001. And Danielle leaves her house in Pensacola, Florida to go to a party. She was living with her mom and her parents had just gotten a divorce. So it was kind of a tough time for the family. And Danielle's only 14 at this time. Mm, okay. That is so young. And she's going to a party? Mm-hmm. Like a birthday party? or <laughs> Listen to your innocence. <laughs> I, well, yeah, there, I know. Yeah, yeah. That's... I know that's where a 14 year old should be going. Right. But yes, but I'm taking um, it. That's not the case. No, poor little pumpkin. So she was in her first year at Tate high school. She was popular. She was a cheerleader. She loved the beach. She was outgoing. She had a really robust friend group, but her sister, Bonnie said that their home life was difficult. So Bonnie is six years older than Danielle. There's three kids in the family. Danielle's the baby. And she says that the household that they grew up in was abusive. There was a lot of verbal abuse with parents that didn't really offer a whole lot of support or guidance. So because of this sort of being left to her own devices, she Danielle gets involved with a bit of a rough crowd at a young age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can I just say that I saw this lady's talk. I don't know if you've seen it, but she talks about how with the parents, if they're there and they're acting like their children are a pain in the butt or that this, you know, not giving them the love that they need, then they're going to seek it from other people. And those other people are usually the ones that are going to hurt them, you yeah. know, and use that wanting for love to manipulate hurt and whatever. So this, yeah, this sounds like one of those scenarios that breaks my heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's like predators can spot those kind of vulnerable people, especially when they're young. You know, Mm -hmm. so, um, so she's getting involved with a rough crowd. She was really smart, but her grades started to slip. Um, and she had only been in high school for a month before she went missing. I know. So she's also really close to her cousin, Dana, um, because the two were only a year apart. And Dana said that even though she was going through a bit of a rebellious stage, as most teenagers do, Danielle was still really kind and funny and fun to be with. Hmm. The cousins didn't go to the same school, but they were super close friends and they did typical teenage girl things like talk about boys and go to the mall. (laughs) Go to the mall. That's like not a thing anymore. Oh, me and Don, so much time (laughs) at the mall. Really? Oh, yeah. We were obsessed with wallets. Don't know why, but we would go and just look at all the wallets. Seriously? Yes. That's interesting. And Not the know. clothes, the wallets. Yeah. We liked to where they could have the pictures in them, what kind of compartments they had to organize all your stuff. And oh, yeah. We'd sit and watch Days of Our Lives on the TVs and JCPenney's. <laughs> oh, boy. What a time to be oh, alive, yeah. Allie. <laughs> you know, isn't it? <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> Okay, so this crowd that Danielle is hanging around wasn't great. Um, One of these people was a guy named Alfredo, who she met because one of her friends was dating his cousin. So it, it said that leading up to her disappearance, Danielle and Alfredo were sleeping together. And Danielle is 14 at the time, and Alfredo was 24. So I... I don't call that sleeping together. I call that sexual assault. It is a hundred percent sexual assault. I can I just Mm -hmm. say I saw a comment on a TikTok thing with it was the bear and the man thing, and yes, this this guy says if they're bleeding and can produce babies, then they're not children. Oh my god! I yeah, that's disgusting. Uh, it's so disgusting. And this whole 24 in a fort and what the 
actual fuck. And there's guys out there saying, well, this is what they did back in the day. It was very common. It wasn't wrong there. It's like, because it was wrong then. It was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it was always been right. wrong. We just didn't have a voice. I can't. Oh. I can't. It's so yeah, triggering. It's so fucking gross. And it's just so. Uh, there's no part of me at that age that would ever be attracted to somebody that age. Like, it's just so hard oh, to understand. Like, I, anyway. I, so, I, yeah. I could share stories, but I know mm-hmm. we got to keep this moving. <laughs> no, no, you can share. Do you have a story about this? Well, I, well, I had a guy, I was 18, so I was of age, but this guy was 38. So he was 20 years older than I was. And my mom set me up with him, which is horrible, but he was part of this oh. dating group that she was a part of. And, you know, it was Utah. And I remember going out with him a couple times and just feeling, completely grossed out like especially mm-hmm. when he got all hot and panty you oh, know God. To, to kiss me and stuff like that and it just it ew it was disgusting yeah and i was oh. of age little on 14 what the fuck oh i know I yeah. this poor girl this poor girl I feel, well again they seek love for the people that are from people mm-hmm. that are you know Mm -hmm. yeah not the right ones yeah so this guy's a predator Mm. so at this time um older sister bonnie was already out of the family home and living on her own but she would regularly visit her mom's house specifically to spend time with danielle that's sweet i know and one of the times that she was at her mom's house this alfredo guy came over to pick danielle up and bonnie saw the age gap and like said something because she was like this is fucking problematic right Mm -hmm. um but she said that danielle told her that she babysat for alfredo and that that was the nature of the relationship did alfredo have kids uh he probably did but nonetheless she was covering for the fact that i guess she knew that this was not you know going to be okay with her sister yeah um yeah you know <clears throat> so um something about alfredo still wasn't quite sitting right with bonnie but what you know she didn't really know what she could do about it and even cousin dana didn't know that danielle was hanging out with these older men so like danielle was really kind of keeping some of these things secretive my understanding um i had a hard time finding the information and perhaps bonnie can clarify but i believe they share a mom but have different dads bonnie and danielle i think so mom susan drank quite a bit and was also using drugs at the time so it wasn't uncommon for danielle at the age of 14 to leave and just be gone for the entire weekend without their mom knowing where she was or hearing from her at all what blows my mind is like that that young of it like such an innocent age Mm -hmm. and then to be out there being an adult for yourself i mean this is all ugh, breaks my heart okay so it sounds like when danielle's parents were still together the house was a little bit more stable and it kind of all went to shit when her parents divorced and she was living with just her mom um It sounds like her dad had rules that he expected her to follow that were normal and her mom didn't. Um, So even though her mom's house. Alfredo. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, even though a mom's house was toxic to a 14 year old, a house with no rules, I guess is pretty fun. Right. Right. In some way. Um, So Dana her dad is brothers with Danielle's dad. And she says that the her dad and Danielle's dad are really similar. They have similar parenting styles. And she even remembers when her and Danielle would go to the skating rink for the evening, which is one of the things they like to do. Danielle's dad, Matt, wouldn't let her wear shorts. So Danielle would like bring a change of clothes with her and change into like her short shorts at the skating rink. I... Fr- they used to do teen night on Friday nights at Skate King. And that was my yeah. jam. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I it remember re- the roller skate rink. The, doing the hokey pokey. Oh, yeah. Oh. Remember the hokey pokey? <laughs> yes. You did do the hokey pokey, right? That wasn't just... 
<laughs> okay. No, I didn't. Uh, and the snowball. The snowball. <laughs> Where the girl chooses the boy to skate with. Oh, no, we didn't have that. What? Yeah, the snowball. We would mm-hmm. have like couples skating and then they'd mm-hmm. put on the like lady in red. <laughs> yes, with like the disco ball lights going around the ring. Oh, my yes, God. Yes, absolutely. Okay, a really quick aside, which is like a cute story. I love cute um, love stories like Michael and I being, um, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend when we were kids. So when I would go to the skate rink as a teenager every Friday night, I would go with my friend Jen. Like that was our jam. I don't even know for how many years. And we met these two boys at the skate rink, Corey and Tom. And I dated Corey briefly and Jen dated Tom and then, you know, skate rink life ended or whatever. But fast forward 20 years, Jen and Tom are married (gasps) with three little kids. They've been married for several years. So cute. (laughs) Tom from the skating rink. (laughs) I love that so much. Were you a fancy skater? Did you know tricks? Um. So that was when rollerblades came out, and I was a pretty good rollerblader. Ooh. Yeah, I was pretty go, good. Maybe that's why I couldn't get I, the boys were intimidated. That's what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> She's a beast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. okay so, so. The, I know. So Dana's mom is Diane. Um, Danielle's aunt. And she said that right before Danielle went missing, Danielle had asked her if she could live with her. And at this time, Diane and Danielle's uncle had separated and she believed that Danielle was kind of looking for a neutral place to stay that wasn't her mom and wasn't her dad's house. Um, Mm -hmm. And Diane told Danielle that she was welcome to stay the night whenever she wanted, but living with her probably wouldn't be a good idea just because they were going through a divorce and there was some tension between the two sides of the family. And so she wanted to be there for Danielle, but she didn't want to um, create any kind of kerfuffle, you know? Right. Oh, that's so tough. The poor kids, man. I know. Danielle's mom says that two weeks before she went missing, Danielle confided in her and told her that she was pregnant and that Alfredo was the father. (gasps) Oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. And she had a doctor's appointment scheduled for the week after she went missing. What kind of doctor's appointment do we know? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. so let's go to the night that she went missing so it's friday september 28th 2001 she had gotten a ride to a high school party with some friends from her neighborhood but she was seen later that night at another party with these older men was the other party also a high school party so the first party was like sounded like a pretty innocent high school party with people her age and then she ditched that party and went to or left that party and went to a party with older men. Ugh, yikes. Mm-hmm. Prior to leaving, she had gotten into an argument with her mom because Susan didn't want her to go anywhere since she had just confessed that she was pregnant. But Danielle left anyway. So the first party was with kids her age at a local park. It was in a neighborhood called The Village, and it sounded like it was pretty low key, like just hanging out at the park. <clears throat> But witnesses at this party would later say that Danielle ended up leaving the party with Alfredo's brother, Alex, in a white Lincoln. Hmm. So this is when she ends up at the other party with the older men, which was in Cedar Tree Lane and at the home of a guy named Robert. So witnesses say that Danielle was heavily intoxicated at this second party, dancing on tables, and she never came home that night. So... The next morning, family members started calling around to all her friends to try and figure out where she's at. So one of Danielle's friends, Stacy, ended up covering for her, as most friends that age would. And Stacy said Danielle stayed the night at her house, which obviously wasn't true. And oh, no. I mean, poor Stacy, I'm sure all these Do years we... later. 
Oh, I'm sure. But I mean, how is she supposed to know? She Well, she was probably, I know what Stacy was doing right after she hung up the phone with them was calling Danielle, trying to get a hold of her guy. Like, Girlfriend, your people are looking for you. Where are you at? Call me, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure she started the search right after she hung up, you know. Mm-hmm. Do you want to know what I did one time? What did you do? I was staying the night at my friend's house when I was like 14 or 15 years old. And well, I told my parents I was staying the night at my friend's house, but then I went and did this other thing with that friend, went to a house party and her mom was driving around the neighborhood looking for us and found us, brought us back to her house and demanded, and there was a couple of us girls demanded that each one of us call our parents and let them know that we had what we had done that we lied and went to a party and that we were now safely back at this friend's house and I will be home in the morning. So I picked up her house phone while she watched me and dialed six of the seven numbers and then had a fake conversation and was even like, I know mom, I know. And then hung up (laughs) and then went home the next morning and all was good. <laughs> Does your mom know this story? No, but you remember it, the right old land, You remember old landlines when you waited too long to dial, and it would go do do do. We're sorry. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes. So I was trying to wrap it up so her mom wouldn't hear the do do do. And I was like, okay, I did I... it. <laughs> I was even it's feigned awesome. being I mean, yelled at. Pretty- Oh, I have too. I, but that's pretty smart. I, my ass, I wouldn't have, I would have been like, okay, and done it and been all upset and crying. Nope. <laughs> I wish I had that presence of mind. I don't know where I'm it like, came no. from. I was just like, well, I can't do that. <laughs> you, you won't see me for the rest of the summer if I confess some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right, lady. I'm on dial. Yes. Look at me now. What's up? No. Oh, my God. All right, so uh, Stacy covers for Danielle, saying that she stayed the night. So then on September 30th, two days after going to this party, Danielle still hasn't come home, and her mom reports her missing. And unfortunately, as it so often happens in these cases, the police figured that Danielle was a runaway. Oh, I, hate I know. Bitch. I know. So this Robert guy who hosted the second party and Alfredo, who was, you know, sexually assaulting Danielle. Those two guys are best friends. The two have been friends since childhood. Robert, I guess, is like this big guy who's kind of intimidating. He's been arrested multiple times for domestic violence over the years. And Alfredo is kind of like a skinny dude. But the two clearly like work in tandem with their Mm -hmm. fucking nefarious bullshittery with young girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. And for the first several weeks after Danielle had gone missing, the two were nowhere to be found. Oh. Yeah. Robert claims that Danielle left his party that night with her friend Stacy and Stacy's boyfriend, Joe. But Stacy and Joe said that Danielle was still at the party when they left. And there were other witnesses from the party that supported Stacy's version, saying that Danielle was still at the party when Stacy and Joe left. Mm hmm. No, I was I was going to say I was just listening to one of your your other podcasts because I'm not obsessed with you guys or anything. Mm-hmm. And it was about the it was an, a bonus episode that you can only listen to on their um <laughs> Patreon. But it was talking, you know, the lady in San Francisco. Oh, that, that went yeah. for the walk. Right. And then they were saying she ran away, but again, there's like there's no personal belongings that she would take with her or things like that of nature you know what i mean mm-hmm. or it was a minimal amount i think i remember you guys commenting so this situation is kind of the same if she's running away mm-hmm. i mean i don't know if you'll get to that point but like doesn't sound like she brought a whole bunch of stuff with her she was just no. going to a party no and i i hope that law enforcement has gotten better but why not default to treating it like a missing person's case right from the beginning. Absolutely. If they're a runaway, you'll learn that through your investigation too, but you will lose that window if they're not, not a runaway. Like the risk is too high. Agreed. 
God. 100% agreed. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Alfredo, he disappears for a few weeks. He pops back up. Nobody seems to know where he went or why. And the case doesn't go anywhere until 2005. So this is four years later when a new detective is assigned to the case. And during this time, there were several women who made allegations that Alfredo had drugged them and sexually assaulted them. But um, none of these women wanted to formally report him, which is totally understandable because he's scary. Um, But in 2005, one woman is brave enough to report it. And he is charged with um, the crimes that he committed against these women, as well as the sexual crimes he had committed against Danielle. So that's good. He was also charged with intimidating a witness, and he was sentenced to over 30 years in prison in 2007. Good. So he's locked up. Good. Yeah. Oh, this is going to make you so fucking mad. So Mm. Bonnie did go to court for Alfredo's sentencing. And when Bonnie and her family were walking into the courtroom, Alfredo's family, along with his girlfriend at the time, spat at Bonnie and her family and said that Danielle was a whore and she got what she deserved. <gasps> what the actual fuck? Oh, oh, fuck, fuck you, fuck, no, fuck, fuck off. There are not enough fucks to give to these motherfuckers. To a family with a missing child. And it always Karma. feels a little bit extra disappointing and like, what the fuck, when it's another woman that's involved like his girlfriend at the time it's like do you have any feeling or obligation to unite yourself with these other women who are claiming sexual assault allegations against this guy Mm. there's a mentality that exists in this world that is so difficult to wrap your brain around and understand Mm mm-hmm that these people, it's me or you. Mm-hmm. And they always choose themselves. And anything you try to do against them turns you into the villain. Mm-hmm. And it is so ugly, the lengths that that mentality can carry people. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I know. I know. I don't. I don't understand this poor family. Like I said, it's, it's, yeah, it's mm. my brain. I'm, <laughs> I'm always like, let's psychoanalyze. What did those people? What was their childhood like? What was their father treating them? What did they do? <laughs> what created them into being this human being? You know, no, I know. There's value in that. I mean, yeah, go further upstream and get some of these Alfredos like on the right path much earlier and. <sighs> There's so many, there's so many things. I'm sure that he didn't have, I mean, I can't imagine that you churn out an adult like that after being raised well Well, and nurtured and all the things. And, and it's not just strictly on the parents and, and that, but it's a societal Mm -hmm. training. Yeah. And norms that are put out there that are advertised as being, Okay. <laughs> I should have worn my fuck the patriarchy shirt for this episode. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, oh, but yes, okay. So next time. Everybody's fucked up. His family, so everybody's, and his girlfriend, everybody's all yeah. in and fuck ups. Okay. Yeah. So he's in prison. So let's get back to this white Lincoln, which was the car that Danielle left the park Ooh. party in that belonged okay. to Alfredo's cousin. So the police want to search this car. When they contact the cousin, he says that he sold the car, but police later learn that the car was in a junkyard and had been totally gutted and totaled, like smushed at the junkyard. See, that's what happens when you wait for fucking Thank years, you. police. Thank Jesus. you. Jesus. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I mean, it, there's a <laughs> chance that even if he still had the car, they would not have found any physical evidence in it this point anyway but so robert maintains that he had nothing to do with danielle's disappearance but he also has um sexual misconduct with a minor on his record along with battery kidnapping sexual assault stalking burglary and grand theft auto 
So, so there's, so there's that. So there's that. Um, he has also gone on social media and said horrible things about where Danielle's body is. What? Yeah. What? It, wh- like, okay. what? Like fed her to a pig farm or fed her to pigs or something of that nature. But then he's also like fucking enraged when his name is associated with the case. Well, that's just a classic sign of guilt, in my opinion. When somebody gets like over the top when mm-hmm. accused of something. Mm-hmm. As- <laughs> or just like refusing to cooperate. Like if you've got nothing to hide, then it's like, yeah, come and come and take a look. I'll talk to you. I'll tell you exactly you know, what I know. Here's the thing. I was going to like say this later, but at this point, so like these dudes are now like in their what, late forties. You have not had grown any emotional intelligence or moral compass as a older 40 something year old man now to do the right thing. Like they likely have children of their own families of their own. God, I hope not. You, I mean, you can't, you're still like you're still doing this like this is still your life the fuck absolutely it that that brain that brain i want to call it a disorder i really (laughs) do it might be called a disorder that i just don't know of i haven't learned it yet for my armchair psychology class but yeah that's oh lord have mercy that i hmm can't the police call him in on that? Like he's him talking about where he put the body. I mean, what the fuck? These are sort of, uh, yeah, I am not really sure. I know that there was several people sort of like the rumor mill around town. Um, was, was that, I, I'm not sure. Oh. Um, but yeah, it just blows my <sighs> mind. It blows my mind. People that don't ever like yeah. progress out of just being a shithead, you know? But mm-hmm. so um, in 2010, the property where Robert's party took place was searched, including the septic tank. Yeah, it's my understanding that the inside of the house wasn't searched, but it would be unlikely that anything would be found when you do a search almost a decade later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they looked in the septic tank. Yeah. And I'm not sh- Well, I mean, you would think that that would cause problems plumbing problems but you would have to maybe they got a t- it, okay i just don't know how unless because isn't that that has to go through your plumbing pipes like you would have to anyways i don't know i don't, I don't pretend know. to understand i don't know either but they didn't find uh, anything but yeah people believe that whoever was at that party know what happened to danielle and there might be people who know that are being quiet out of fear Mm. searches for danielle have been done over the years and they searched the areas that were known to be frequented by these men as well as any area that may have been mentioned in a tip but no evidence has turned up so um sister bonnie said that the initial treating danielle as a runaway is what obviously really harmed the investigation from the start Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm And the last known sighting of Danielle was at that party at Robert's house. Those men know what happened to her. Yeah, they do. And I don't think she left that party alive. Oh, really? Mm -mm. Well, I mean, do we know how many people were at the party? No. Hmm. But also, I'm like one of the theories, and I can totally see this, is if Alfredo knew that she was pregnant and that she had planned on keeping this baby that he would you know that that would enrage him or whatever like he would want to get rid of her for that reason possibly Mm -hmm. jesus that's just so i yeah i i remember going to a party when i was like young i must have been 12 or 13 and there was alcohol being served and I drank some and was feeling tipsy and the adults there were getting rowdy and dancing on the tables and making kind of lewd comments, things like that. Like 
nothing ever happened to me, but I remember feeling so like this is beyond me Mm -hmm. of my age and my like, this is adult. This is scary. Yeah. And I called my house and my dad came and got me and picked Mm -hmm. me up Mm -hmm. and brought me home. And they asked if I was okay. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, well, you're kind of acting funny. I'm like, no, I'm just tired. And I like went home and slept. But I, that feeling of, God, that was scary. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be here anymore. And I yeah, get out well, of here. Yeah. Like I was obviously, I mean, I feel like it's like a rabbit in a den of wolves. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, where you're just like, this is not. Like, I'm not safe here. Yeah. Yeah. I've had that feeling before, too. Yeah. Yep. And it's so hard, like, when you're a, just a little bit older, like Danielle's age, like, to not want to look stupid, especially in front yeah. of older guys. Like, even if you do feel that way, you might be trying to continue to hang just so that you could sort of be seen as a peer and, like, cool and, you know... Well, there's, they're obviously, and again, it goes into the manipulative nature of these. If she was in a home that was verbally and physically abusive, that automatically puts you as a people pleaser because you're wanting to keep yourself from being harmed. Mm -hmm. And then people of his older age knows that, uses that against her to, like, if she's saying, well, I'm not comfortable and I want to go home. He's going to turn it, you know, and be like, what's the matter, you little baby? Are you going to do it? You know, like knows those things to push. And oh, Mm -hmm. this poor, sweet baby girl and 14 and pregnant. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a whole nother. Jesus. And that was obviously not ever able to be confirmed. Um, I can't I can't imagine going through your entire adult life holding on to this kind of secret and not knowing that this family is devastated, like how do you just go to sleep at night and sleep easy? And it would be haunting me. It is. I mean, maybe on a subconscious level, but I don't know. I feel like these people with this type of mentality, it, I, I feel like sometimes they're able, they're able to convince themselves that, what happened maybe didn't happen or was justified. And like, they basically convinced themselves that what they did was right Mm -hmm. or not wrong. And they know they could get in trouble for it. So they're not going to say anything, but, and that's why then they don't feel bad about it because had they not have done it, then they wouldn't have been protecting themselves. And they're the ones again, them or me Mm -hmm. and they're who's important. So I'm going to take care of my, I did what I needed to do to take care of myself. But what about the people who might have been there who weren't involved, but who know who are me? Like, I would just say, if you're scared to say something, just do an anonymous tip, you know, report it anonymously. This family is devastated. Yeah. And I'm sure it was advertised a lot. So it's not like it's not something that we aren't aware of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's literally my next sentence. Like everybody in her hometown knows about this case. Like everybody knows this case and there's whisperings of going on throughout the years of all kinds of things like the hog farm and the, you know, the pregnant and the, all the things that have never been actually confirmed. Um, And every single time, like her sister said, every time human remains are found in the area, their family just sits on pins and needles waiting to see if it's Uh, her. I know. Oh, that just, yeah. Because another side of that is you never want to imagine your loved one suffering. Mm-hmm. And then to find if, if it's, I don't, I, I can't imagine going through that. Because at one point you want to know, right? Mm-hmm. But on the other point, do you really want to know? Because. <sighs> I think that you, you always know, like not always, but I would think after this much time has passed, you definitely want to know because it's hard to know if you should still have hope or if you should be 
mourning her. Yeah. And I think, I think to a, a big part of that would be to be able to take her remains away from a site mm-hmm. where she suffered and was hurt and everything and bring them home to be honored and treated with love and compassion like she deserved, you know? Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, this poor baby. Um, there is a, peti- a petition on change.org to have her case moved from the Escam- Escambia County sheriffs to the state jurisdiction. Um, and mm-hmm. there is a number that you can call. You can call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children if you have a tip at 1 800 843 5678. Um, And I will put that and the petition in the show notes along with her sister Bonnie's TikTok channel, where she also has a lot of information and updates and thoughts and all the things. So go follow Bonnie on TikTok. And that is (sighs) Danielle. Yeah, that's, I'm going to, so they, if they go to the state, obviously a little bit better investigation team then or was it does that mean it's gonna do you know if that means it's gonna be given that they have more funds like more funds to yeah so let me actually let me go to this petition and i shall tell you it says the florida department of law enforcement is a state level agency with more resources and expertise in handling complex cases they have access to advanced technology and forensic tools that could help uncover new leads or evidence Ooh, yes, yes, so, yes. Yeah, just better resources. Do you have anything for the good of the order? <laughs> You're so good. You're so good. <laughs> God. Um, follow us on all the things. Um, we're on all the things on Facebook, Instagram, X, whatever the hell that is. Uh I don't manage that account. I can't, I don't understand it. The TikTok is flatlining, but um I have some ideas in place after my nice. Digicon that I have attended in the last couple of days. I might have some ideas there. But um oh we have a website, crimewineandchaos.com. And that's it. Uh uh-uh, uh, you have a Patreon. I have a Patreon if you want a bonus episode, if you want your episodes a day early, if you want to periodically have virtual wine night with us, join the Patreon. Five dollars a month gets you in. And then you're a Chaos Kid Club member. Ooh, ooh. I'm telling ooh, you, ooh. it's the cool kid, it's the cool kids club. It is the cool kids club. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you back. And Thank please you. feel free to invite me back at any time. I am Fuck yeah, yours. sister. Thank you. Well, yes, thank you. This was chaotic. I did three. Oh, shit. My hand was off the camera. (laughs) I know. I thought you were actually just having a stroke. (laughs) Let's try this again. (laughs) Oh, this is what I saw. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye. No, we didn't say chaotic. Okay, ready? Okay, One. what? This was motherfucking chaotic. Bye. We did Bye. So good. <laughs> Bye. Crime, Wine, and Chaos is produced by 8th Direction Records. Artwork by Joshua M. Davis. Music by Paul Abner. If you would like to support the show, you can visit our Patreon page at crime, wine, and chaos forward slash Patreon. Cheers. Wait, fuck, did you just say Florida? Just a free-for-all out there. <laughs>